Walking the Black Love Matters with a sound as a therapy session for figuring out adulthood. What does it sound for? Serves. There we go. Oh my goodness. Is your, your mouth water? Serves. Serves is a therapy session for what? Figuring out adulthood. And loving each other? Ryan Ryan and Brock and Michelle. Or Jay Z and Beyonce. I don't like how you're trying to. Uh, Who is you? I'm near him, but I don't like how you're trying to, <laughs> trying you to correct like? me. Not correcting. It is. Because if correcting. it sounds a, like a therapy session, it maybe is. It sounds like a therapy session. It don't always have to serve as a therapy session. I'm just trying it can to take sound it. like it's a therapy session. One thing that the people say they appreciate about us is consistency. This is episode <laughs> 385. <laughs> Be sure to leave one, two, three, four, five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher and follow us on all forms of social media at Black Love Matters. That's Black with no K. What's going on? Happy Friday. <laughs> This is our first shout out Friday episode in what? How many? Three weeks? Yeah. Almost four now? Mm -hmm. You're not going to go through it. You ain't going to tell us where to scroll down at? All right. Let me get my phone. I'm a little rusty myself. Why you got to get the phone to do so, it? Because I'm a little rusty. So sometimes I got to do it, do it alone. So you go on ahead. You I got to do it alone. Alone? Yeah, alone. alone. Oh, oh, log. I, thought, I said A-L-O-N-E. <laughs> go work on that, baby. Since we've been in Michigan... Child, we've leaned right into the Midwest accent. We've got to talking fast and slick. Open up that <laughs> podcast app. Okay. Y'all ready? Yeah, we got it. Come on. Tap on search. Tap, tap. Type in Black Love Matters. Y'all see us with the heart and shit. You know, if you've been tapping, you rolling. Heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you've been rolling us for a minute, it should just pop on up. Come on. That's how we knew if you didn't search. Though. Yes. Your phone be like, can't come up with a result. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Nero. Why are you, you moving so slow? <laughs> you tap on Black Love Matters. Uh-huh. And if you ain't subscribed, tap subscribe right there. Subscribe. And then scroll on down. Scroll with a K. Scribe with a K. Yes. <laughs> You're going to see reviews and ratings. Okay. If you scroll down a little bit more, yes. you'll see it's very, very, very tidy writing. I don't know why they got in tiny writing. Mm -hmm. Write a review. Hey, hit it. Hit that. Hit it. Double right. hit or one hit? One hit. One hit. Bam. Bam. Type in that review. Mm-hmm. Leave five stars. Only five. Only five. Yep. And we'll shout you out on the podcast. Yep. We miss y'all. We love Shout Out Friday, and we love all the emails and all the stuff y'all sent to us. So mm -hmm. We can't wait to get into it. Absolutely. Time for my check-in. What's going on? I'm on a hunt for a new therapist. Okay. As y'all know, my where therapist, the therapy resides. where the therapy reside is where Nyambi needs to reside. So y'all know, since we don't made the move, you know, all therapists don't got the same jurisdiction. They like the police. So they only can have licenses in certain areas. So I need to find a Michigan therapist. I had to break up with my therapist. Well, it's not a breakup. It's a temporary pause. And the thing is, we're going to be here long enough that I need some maintenance. Like, I don't need a new therapist to kind of like go through my life history, but I just need a therapist like, I'm not looking for tools and resources. I just need a therapist that I can literally come vent to weekly and, like, provide all of my angst, depression, anxiety, worry, and hand it off to them. Mm -hmm. And then they can package it up nicely and come give it back to me, and I can compartmentalize it in a way in which I can move forward. Because oh. right now it's just a big old mess. I feel like I got a – I feel like a bag lady. Mm. I feel like I'm using the tools of my um, old therapist, and I just got little target bags. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to just hide that in there. And now them motherfuckers is overflowing. Mm -hmm. So I need to give it to a professional to pack it up nicely and give it back to me so I can hold on to it. Yeah. At least to the top of the year. Because that's when we're going back. Sometimes you need to just release. And then at the top of the year, I'm telling them to talk amongst each other. <laughs> Share y'all files <laughs> together. So at first I was going to try to just, you know, tough it out. I actually was thinking about getting more of a mental health coach mm -hmm. while I was here just on that. But I was like, the shit I want to talk about, I don't want no fucking coaching. I need no. therapizing. Because um, you know, that's what the girls got out now. They got mental health coaches where it's just like, all right, so you feel that. Be in this moment. Do this. Fuck that. I need someone who is going to lay it low and spread it wide. Oh. So I'm going to just go with a therapist. Okay. And you know, being in Detroit, it's, it's a little easier to find a black woman too. So I'm going to lean into it and... I'll go on a hunt for that. Y'all know I done got to the point where finding a therapist is like second nature to me. Mm -hmm. It's almost exciting me a little bit <laughs> to be like, ooh, it's time to do this pace again. I was thinking about going with a black man 
Mm-hmm. But then Kevin Samuels. Um, so I'm not ready for Kevin that. Kevin Samuels is not a therapist. I'm, it's just black men. He's a coach. It's just, you would have got one. <laughs> that nigga's not. Listen, could y'all imagine if I hit the coach button <laughs> and then Kevin Samuels pop up on my screen? Because thank goodness the, the, my my employee offers. And that's the thing. I don't have to look for it myself. My employee offers the services where they'll. You literally put what you searching in and they'll push you back a bunch of people. So I don't, that's another reason I'm doing it. I don't have to do kind of the groundwork. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, but I can imagine if I put a mental health coach and then Kevin Samuels pop up. <laughs> and you know, I'm messy. I'm going to hit submit. How tall this are This is me. Except. Oh, this is going to be like, rate yourself on one. No, <laughs> you ain't going to say yourself. Rate how you feel now. One through 10. No seven. No seven. Three. <laughs> but I, I don't know. Like, I might think about it though. We'll see. This first one, um, I sent... An email requesting this one black lady to see if she has any. She's accepting new clients, but I'm seeing if her availability is in alignment with my work schedule. Mm-hmm. But if her doesn't, if her, if she doesn't work out, I'm thinking about. There's a few black men that popped up. You honestly might want to look at it, Nero. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I um, need to get the link again. Yeah, there's a few black men that came up that I might try. I don't twofold. I don't think I've had a black man, or I don't think I've ever had a male um, counselor therapist. Mm-hmm. So this might be a good day or time to dip my toes in that water. Honestly, I need to quit playing with the Kevin Samuels thing. Y'all know I'm just playing with that. That nigga is not a coach or none of that. Like, that's entertainment. But you know who gives me hope for black male therapists? The black male therapist that's on Love and Hip Hop Huntsville. Oh, yeah. I don't know who Martell therapist is. Dr. Francis. Dr. Francis is the right balance of holding him and not making him feel like a straight up trash can. But also at the same time, holding him accountable. And Mm -hmm. he does that seamlessly. Did y'all see it this past weekend? Or was that two weeks ago now? No, it was, uh, yeah, two weeks ago. Where Dr. Francis was, like, helping him unpack moving on with his marriage and, like, basically trying to get him ownership to be like, you fucked another woman. Mm -hmm. Like, you had an affair. (laughs) And And you got her pregnant. And basically, no, we didn't get there now. And he was trying to get him to understand that it's not an adequate excuse that your wife wasn't, fucking sucking spreading whatever that is whatever she wasn't providing because that's what he keeps saying she wasn't providing me the the needs i deserve that still sir was not a reason to then go feel that need with another woman the way that y'all grace-based coveting is set up it's not through sickness and health and only if you give me head right it's sickness and health (laughs) Head, no head, coochie, no coochie, penis, no pen. Like it's all of those things. And he was just trying to he was just trying to get him in integrity with that. And saying that doesn't make you a bad person that you cheated, but you need to acknowledge the behavior that you participated in that led to the dis- dissolution of your marriage. Mm-hmm. Right? So he was unpacking this with them and trying to get him to see that you can do bad things but still be a good person. Like you're not a horrible person. You just do fucked up shit. And if you can change your behaviors, you behaviors can be in integrity with who you are. Then he was <laughs> then he was like, "Okay, unpacking a girlfriend and who is she and like why do, why do you think your wife would be upset? Then he hit with her like, what if you like slept with her and she had a baby? Then then the whole thing goes silent. She is pregnant. And then she was like, he is pregnant. And Dr. Francis, he didn't even respond. He just stood up on his chair. It just stood next to his chair and just looked at him. <laughs> and he got really big eyes. And he just spread his eyes weird wide. It was like, she pregnant. Look, how okay. far along is he? <laughs> That's what look he wanted to say. He was like, okay. I don't want you to leave here feeling like a bad person. <laughs> you could tell it was literally three minutes left in the therapy oh, session. Yes. Any therapist listening to y'all hate when we throw that shit on y'all with 90 seconds. <laughs> the, the, I'm sure Dr. Francis is like, nigga, start with that. <laughs> start with <No>. that. <laughs> therapy really happens for me five minutes before it's about to end. <laughs> <laughs> And tell me more. Tell, goes, me more. tell me more. Tell me more. You be fucking up the next person behind you on anxiety and depression. Because you know therapy is what to be what 50, 50, 50 minutes, minutes or, or forty five, depending on who it is. Forty five to fifty. In so and they out. can have ten minutes to write about to your write ass. to write about our shit <laughs> <laughs> to sketch to put in a burn Look, book at 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 what forty five an hour. This you. This is when I dropped the bomb. She is pregnant. What? Boom. what? Look, hold up, hold up. I gotta, I gotta cancel this meeting. <laughs> I gotta tell them be a little bit late because <laughs> they take all that fifteen minutes. <laughs> did you do? Did you do that to your therapist? Office? All the time. Shit. What did she used to? Miriam had a black woman therapist. What did she used to say? 
Okay, I guess we're going to talk about it next week. <laughs> Did you ever start with it? See, I'd be a therapist. I have so many my receipts to be so tight. I was like, I want to go back to the like shit bomb you left me with. Like, is that not appropriate? <laughs> therapists who are listening. Like, if people used to tell me I would be a good therapist because of reasons like that, I wouldn't be. I would go back. Like, so let's go back to the shit show we started with last week. Let's start right in the middle of the diarrhea. So you said this. What does this mean? Did your therapist open like that? I think, I think sometimes oh. you forget because, you know, we used to meet every so other much. week. Yeah. Are therapists allowed to cuss at their patients? I don't think so. This year, have your therapist ever cussed at you? No. And I'd be saying hmm. nigga and motherfucker. Is all that the time. against like their integrity? Another reason I couldn't be a I therapist. Because listen, someone tell me something. I'm like, nigga. Oh, I'm like, bitch. <laughs> wow. That is some shit to process. Thank God you're standing. Right. This- <laughs> Maybe I'll be a mental health coach. I can't get the real certification. <laughs> what is going on? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, this is my check in. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm seeing the therapist. Um, exactly. Oh, we got other good news. Bad news for some. We got that vaccination, y'all. Or almost. Uh, no claps for that, Nero. <laughs> my arm hurt a little all right we got that vaccination y'all we was worried because you know we got that cali license and every time in michigan they be like you basically got to live off eight mile in the southfield freeway <laughs> exactly um no as no. near i'm saying exit nine joy road, road exit and- nine come on with the freeway <laughs> you gotta live basically on joy road and southfield freeway to get a vaccination in michigan um but we got to hope to like some of the mobile, the mobile stuff that's run through Wayne State. And we didn't think we were going to get it. We were like, well, let's chance it. Let's just go get in line, see what happened. You know what surprised me, y'all? We went there. It was less than 10 people in line. Mm-hmm. And we were able to get our shot. We actually got the Moderma. So we got our first shot. And then in about a month, we go for our second dose. Mm-hmm. And then I think it's what, three weeks after that, we'll be fully vaccinated. Mm-hmm. So it's such a, I'm grateful it shows the light is at the end of the tunnel. The only side effects I have currently is a sore arm. Um, but other than that, it's good. You know what surprised me, though, Neil? What? People in Michigan, y'all is not for the shot at you. As These all. niggas here. Y'all not. Re- I mean, are we? do we got to have this conversation again? Are the same people who eat ham hocks, tricks are for kids, Twinkies, pork, beef, Sugar mixed with Kool Aid and eat it on a spoon. Shit. Sugar water, milk with sugar mixed oh, in it. Moss. Should I just continue to list cereal with more sugar in it? Like are, are, McDonald's French fries. Make down any fast food. Any Fago. <laughs> red, red, listen, red velvet cake. Dye number three. Yellow number five. You put baby powder on your coochie. Like it has talc in it. <laughs> You, hey, I'm calling myself out. You still put aluminum under your arms. Under arms. Are you the same niggas who are telling me that the vaccination's not safe? Okay, cool. They are. I just don't process it. The people who with obesity, the sugar's gonna kill you before the vaccination. But the real trick is. They already got you. They already done got you because we all work 40 plus hours a week and pay bills just to go in circles to do what? To die. Come on. That's the trap. That's the real vaccination. They already, you already did. You you already, you already on a hamster wheel. (laughs) So I'm just not sure why we have freezer papers. They was like, you don't got that vaccination. (sighs) Ooh. How you feeling? I heard niggas get blood clots. You got some blood clots. Nigga, you ate a red hot link. You eat Cheetos. <laughs> Have you got... Never mind. What? Y'all got to stop. We got to get this vaccination. Mm-hmm. We ha- Y'all have to stop. You have to cut this out. We have to... We got to get rid of this disease. Like, we have to do what we have to do to get it. And I'm glad I did my part. But... But it's mutating. It's mutating because y'all niggas ain't taking a fucking shot. Yeah, because it's mutating and st- the chief Cheeto field fingernail that right. you didn't lick with the gonorrhea y'all got the chlamydia that's resistant. What's it called? It's um, antibiotic resistant. Mm-hmm. We were going out with um, white ass then, and we was out in Oakland, and it was like on the um, bus stop signs, mm-hmm. and it was like wear a condom, 
chlamydia resist no antibiotic resistant chlamydia on the rise i was like what the yeah. fuck is going on in oakland we got it though how you feel about Nero? I feel good, you know. I want to um, know how we got it before niggas who live here got it. I don't. That, that still is kind of because you know how niggas be. They be listening on me. I know niggas that work in the health field and be like, I don't know about all this. I don't know, and it's like you work in the fucking health field. Okay, you work in the health field. Uh, I'm happy to have it. Like I said, I am trying to get to Tulum. I'm not. my shirt off. I'm trying to get to Miami. <laughs> You're trying my to travel at least safely. Exactly. I'm trying to walk around the world without the face condom on my face. Well, you still got to wear the face condom. But still, I can I can still be if free. If it slide down a little bit. If it you slide don't, down. When you scratch your nose, you don't start shaking. Right. Because you're like, oh, Lord, I got to wait two weeks to see what's going to happen because I scratched my nose. I can walk a little bit freely now when yes. a nigga cough or sneeze. Ooh, like whenever someone cough and sneeze, my whole body tents up. I'm about to fuck y'all up. <coughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> People just threw off their headphones. How many of y'all just jumped? <laughs> That's why you need a vaccination. <laughs> because you jumped. <laughs> PTSD is real. <laughs> I'm not gonna have that. Who y'all niggas jumped when y'all heard me call? Oh my god, and they probably surround sound their headphones. Yes. They was curious and they just threw it on the ground. What the fuck? Oh, COVID. 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 But niggas scared to get a vaccine. Get the vaccination, y'all. I, I don't know about needles. I'm scared of needles. Unless you have me scared of needles, you got 15 tattoos. Unless, oh my God. unless you, and, and got them at a tattoo party. <laughs> when the tattooer used a ink pen. You know what I'm talking about? One of those yes. big ink pens and made their own, um, what's it called? Rehashed um, tattoo gun. These the same people. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or the same people who use a uh what is it safety pin to pierce their ears yeah i'm looking at you with the keloid and they sanitized it with a lighter i was gonna say alcohol no no i was gonna say um um vodka <laughs> with okay. hazel okay <laughs> but we're scared of the vaccination mm-hmm. no problem good luck also good luck staying your ass in the house too mm-hmm. oh it's still my check-in we starting to get used to michigan mm-hmm. but i'm needed to go to the store I, y'all know I love a good Trader Joe's. I love a good grocery store run. We about to get into Aldi's. I remember as a child, I used to hate going to Aldi's because Aldi's is one of the store where they didn't provide bags. Yeah, so, so you had, had to pay for bags. Brands, so. And it was like just very weird. It was a very weird store. But something has happened. And you got to put the quarter to get, to get a, a get a basket. Cart. It just reeked of poverty. And I think I was more of this thing. I was trying to look at symbols of liberation and I didn't really understand that I should have had my black ass there. And that's what I honestly that's what we should have been shopping at undergrad and stuff. Aldi is the IKEA of grocery stores. Yes. And so I think there's they're everywhere in Michigan. So I think I'm gonna try it because I seen grapes on sale for 95 cents. And they be organic. And they got vegan food. So I'm about to go ahead to Aldi's. I'm gonna let y'all know my adventures and all all these might be the new Trader Joe's. Mm-hmm. And not that we don't have a Trader Joe's, but if y'all even look on the Michigan website, it's only literally in three locations. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to be able to get to them as often as I used to when they be down the street on every corner. But you know what is on every corner? Aldi. Aldi's. In a liquor store. In a liquor store. In a church. So what I'm going to do is do some digging at the Aldi store. And I'm going to report back. Do we got any Aldi's fans who um listening or they buy their stuff from Aldi's? Y'all got any tips, tricks, or stuff we should know? What's the stuff we should buy, but we need to avoid? Um, but we're gonna do that and we'll be able to report. Let me back see to if they got any Aldi uh fans. Oh, I'm sure it's Aldi Instagram. Yeah. I'm sure it's like Aldi buys or something oh, like that. All the favorite finds. Because mm-hmm. you know where I'm trying to get into Costco next. The amazing Aldi. Oh, it's like four or five accounts. Keto Maybe, Aldi finds. Okay. Not keto Aldi's. We're gonna be like tra- black girl and Trader Joe's. Mm-hmm. Niggas and Aldi's. Yeah. Aldi favors. They got two hundred and four thousand uh, followers. Come on. Oh, I know something was there. I seen that ad. And I looked at the little ratings on Yelp. I said, Oh, it ain't even nasty. Mm-hmm. In my head, Aldi's was nasty. <laughs> Y'all let me know if I'm in well, you ain't gotta let me know because I'm gonna walk in that store. Mm-hmm. And if it ain't passing the sniff test, I'm gonna turn my ass right back around. See the thing that always threw me off about Aldi is like the off name, the I wouldn't say off, but their name brands. So like, their Gogurt is like Moo Tubes. Yeah, it gave you Walmart realness. And the thing is, Walmart I have that Equate brand, but Equate was always subpar. Mm-hmm. There were there are very few Equate um, dupes that are equivalent to the name brand. 
Where I think at Target, some of the Target brand, uh, what's it called, Hunt and Gather or whatever, mm-hmm. is equivalent, if not better, than the name brand. Same with Trader Joe's. All of the majority, what ninety to eighty percent of Trader Joe's stuff is Trader Joe's branded stuff, but that stuff is either on par or better mm-hmm. than the name brand. And I, Walmart and all these used to be all these. We'll see now. Didn't do it for me. Mm-hmm. You can just tell by the material on the cardboard at Walmart that it was going to be some shit. Yes. Ooh, look at these macarons. That kind of remind me of Trader Joe's. Come on. Bam, 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 bam. Wow. <laughs> What's going on with you now? Uh, so yeah, your boy got that shot too. Mm-hmm. My arm, my arm is okay. Your or your arm's sore. My arm is sore. I got to be transparent. It do hurt to lift a little. <laughs> it don't hurt a little bit. It's just <laughs> I can tell like I got a shot. It's a little tender to the touch, but I'm all right. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, we gotta be transparent and y'all don't know near i'm scared of needles were you scared when that white woman rolled up on you yeah she rolled up fast she was stabbing she was pop, 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 pop. i know you know you know you're getting old and you know the uh detroit is so small and big at the same time i literally ran into somebody i went to middle and high school with i was wondering who near was talking to he was talking real too i was like let the nurse nurse who is that you talking to now first of all don't say it in a jealous tone i was saying let who them who the fuck are you talking to i was telling you to let them nurse so they don't mix up them vaccinations line them up maybe she counting them who the fuck are you talking first to all, ain't nobody cussing i'm a lady oh she be cussing don't don't let her fool y'all <laughs> but yeah I, like it's just interesting how big and small detroit is because i oh, literally just time. ran into somebody i went to middle school with yeah. and high school hmm. it's like you went to high school with her too or somebody else? I went to high school with her. Oh, oh, so y'all like grew up together. Yeah, more or less. Not more or less. That's a long time, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. It's like, hey, like, is that true? I mean, what's even better is that y'all look the same. There's some people that I've seen. I went to middle, elementary, middle, and high school, and they was like, hey, Nyambi. I said, <laughs> who the fuck is who you? Who are you? Jesus, life been hard. And so, you know, that, that you know, that put a little, It was that was cool. It was cool a little time. Um, it felt home. Yeah, it, did. it felt warm. It felt yeah. welcoming. We we don't get recognized. Mm-hmm. In the, like no one's ever gonna be like, oh my god, near my Nyambi, it's so good to see you. What's up? Mm-mm. That ain't gonna happen in the bay. No. Yeah, I mean, which is nice because we can be incognito a lot mm-hmm. and literally just kind of go about our business. But sometimes it can be lonely. I was like, hey, I thought you was in. Where are you supposed to be? <laughs> out of town somewhere? Don't you stay out of town? It's like, oh, oh. we're back. Oh, well, welcome back. Give me your iron so I can give you a shot. Yes. Like, oh, okay. That's what's up. I mean, also, I need something about knowing that it's good people in certain professions. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming she good people. Yeah, she good people. So I'm like, that always gives me like move to course. Yeah, you can tell she's a good nurse just mm-hmm. on the way how they she be having a conversation. She be having a, oh, those uh nurse conversations. So how you doing? Mm-hmm. You okay over there? How you feeling? Move your arm. Move your arm. Look Let at it. you moving your arm. Look at it. It's all up in there. You go there. You move your arm. Ooh. Yeah. Now move your toes. Oh, come on. It's not Ooh. even connected. You're going to be all right. <laughs> Look, I'm glad to be here because being in that ER, niggas be sad. I bet they is. I'm here. Everybody's happy for me to give them a shot. <laughs> I used to, can y'all see me? I used to want to be a nurse. My aunt was a nurse. Mm-hmm. And I used to want to be a nurse when I grew up. Mm-hmm. Could you see me as a nurse? Yeah, I can come see her. But you know. How would I be? Would I be a mean nurse? <laughs> yeah, you would. Or a sweet nurse? Or actually, I'll be the head nurse. What's the call? I don't head know. nurse. Head yeah. nurse. Because Niambi always trying to run stuff. Niambi was trying to run the uh, how they was giving out shots. <laughs> Uh uh-uh, uh, y'all need to operate operationalize this. Near, I'm about to volunteer. Because yeah. these niggas ain't forward. around here. Oh, they got these cars all over the place. Bring these cars forward. Stop people from coming in. Get us a QBR code so they can just scan it on their phone. Too much paper pens exchanging hands. <laughs> <laughs> so that was cool. Um, what else is going on? Fun fact: Did you know love and marriage? Huntsville was just supposed to be a, a show between Martell and um, Mel and Tell. Absolutely knew that they were the they are the sweethearts. They are the reason I go back. But it was supposed to be like a renov- renovation a, a show. renovation show. And then Carlos King was like, "Let's put that on the back burner, beloved." <laughs> y'all got some friends. Look, <laughs> he was like, "They they was cute," and I was like, "Y'all got some friends that's cute like y'all." <laughs> no, the thing was, Mel told him that Martell cheated. I don't want to be on the show no more. This Carlos King. Well, let's tell your story. <laughs> let's tell your story, sis. 
I, I'll make sure you can tell your story. I have to. And did he tell a story? <laughs> Once upon a time, <laughs> there was a cheating ass nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Why would they sign up for that? Why would he? That is how you know Martell is a narcissist. Narcissist. Would you sign up? How much they couldn't get that much money? Nero, hmm. if we talk about that, it'd be like, oh, we're going to do a show about moving to Silicon Valley and um, and what does it mean to be black in tech and blah, blah, blah. Then I caught him be like, nah, Nero cheating on me. I'm done. Then they, this is them. Let me take a support. Look. <laughs> uh, let's tell your story. Let's tell your Nero, story. Nero, you're going to agree to that? Hell the fuck no. I'm like, mm-hmm. maybe they ambushed his ass. Maybe he ain't know. What he thought he, or he should know he lacked self control, self self control to stop. Because mm-hmm. so I'm assuming that once they started filming, he was like, "Oh, I'm stop." You know, made him and Melanie done came to their agreement. She said, "You stop doing it. We'll work to, on forgiveness." And the highlight could be just the cheating, but how do we move through it and make it stronger? In my head, that's what I'm thinking. They thought, mm-hmm. but then he forgot condoms. Or he kept just fucking her, and he kept fucking her. All through the TV and, show and, and everything. You're on television. And I know OWN is on the come up, but it's on direct TV. 279. <laughs> so you thought you was that slick to or get away with it? No, no. He he cares a lot. Mm-hmm. But he thought he was that slick coming from Huntsville. Yeah. <laughs> small Huntsville. If you thought Detroit was small, I only can imagine how small Huntsville is. Mm-hmm. You thought he was gonna get away with that? He thought he did. Oh, national television! And on top of that, you had a nerd to get your wife pregnant. And other girl pregnant. What the little Wayne? So uh, that was interesting. Mm -hmm. So there's a behind the scenes episode that was very enlightening, very hilarious. Now that we look at it, Mel Mel came out the door talking about what what if someone was cheating? I didn't even realize it until I watched it again. Like that wasn't the conversation, and it was so funny because that's when the rest of the group found out. Yeah. Shout out to Marcel. <laughs> oh shit! The shit that they cut out was the good stuff. I mean, that's how you can tell Carlos King care a little, mm-hmm. but not enough to not but get not the ratings. <laughs> because he's like, <laughs> there was a few times he's like, all right, all right, y'all got to stop. Yeah, yeah. Let's just stop. Yeah, this you can tell he cared there. Yeah, because it's getting too much. They about to start tussling. All, all this about to get cut out. They about to tussle. So yeah. let's just take five and let's start over. We got all we need. <laughs> <laughs> He's straight Marlon. He, he he's the new Marlon Scott. Absolutely. Up in the you put Mo, first of all, you put respect. Oh, I do on Mona Scott. But she Young. is the queen of destroying lives. So it's she's the queen. Andy Cohen is the king. Yes. <laughs> Mona Scott and Andy Cohen. You put them two in a room. Beast destroying those lives. They would destroy whole communities, <laughs> generations of families. <laughs> And businesses exactly, <laughs> and get a couple babies and weddings out of it too. <laughs> Shout out to them, mm-hmm. legendary. Yes, I like a good Mona Scott. I would never be on any of her shows, but would I love to be her chief of staff or her PA? Mm-hmm. Yes, just yes. behind the scenes, Mona. What is you thinking? <laughs> what we gonna do? What? No, Mona. No, we can't. Okay, I go do. It. Okay, 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 okay. What you need me to tell Joe Button to do? Okay, okay. He, I think he coming back. <laughs> that podcast. No, see if um, what's the two on there? What's the white one and then the one who looks sad? I don't know. What's the ones ain't on there no more? I don't know. There's a lot of them that there. Who else ain't on there? I don't know. Rich? You talking about Rich? Who you talking about? Oh, I'm talking about the Joe Bun podcast. What's the oh, white Rory man and the, the slat, sad looking black community? Rory and all. Yeah, Mona will go flex and go pick them up. <laughs> that's a Mona Scott movie. Yeah, that look, is look, a Mona look. Scott movie. Ooh, you stirring it up. <laughs> I want to hear Rory and Miles' story. Uh huh. You know? Yeah. It's going to be a lot of respectfully. It's going to be a lot of I don't speak on that me in business. <laughs> Which is just black passive aggressiveness. It is. <laughs> I don't like to speak on that man. I don't like to pause. What they be doing all that toxic black man passive pause. aggressiveness. Respectfully. I want to be like just say disrespectfully. <laughs> disrespectfully I don't give a fuck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what else? What's the other key words they be saying? I don't like to talk about that man in business. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't be knowing what I. What? Prayers to all involved. Prayers to all involved. <laughs> Nigga, you got a podcast. <laughs> this is basically TMZ. This is the... Re- what do you mean? Yes. Talk about it. Where do we hear for then? Mm-hmm. The Bible study? Yes. All right. Well, grateful, 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 grateful. grateful. Um, 
A couple things. Seen this movie called Bad Movie. Uh, what was it? Not Bad Movie. Bad Trip. <laughs> it kind of is. It is a bad movie. It is a bad movie. It's, it's called, so good it's bad. It's called Bad Trip. It had Lil Rail and the other guy in there. What's Unless that light skin black man? I don't man know. Man? Let's, let's, let me Google it. And Tiffany Haddish. And Tiffany Haddish. And it was supposed to come out to theaters. Yeah. And it's like the black version of Grand, Bad Grandpa. Oh, that's how Bad Grandpa is? Yes. So it's basically a dramedy instead of a prank show. Mm -hmm. So there's only like five or six characters that are true actors. Yes. And then everyone around them are like real people. And like you're catching the real people's expression. Is that how they summarize it? Yes. Or, or how was it? Hidden camera captures two best friends pulling hilarious and uh, inventive pranks on her unsurprising public. The black man name. What's his name? Nerums. Eric Andre. I thought it was it's bad, but it's good. Would you consider this a cult classic in that realm or no? Yeah, it can be up there. It is so bad, y'all, that it's good. They got a 74 on Rotten Tomatoes. It's something about it. I couldn't stop watching it. it. Mm -hmm. Like it's one of those things where like as soon as it was coming the first five minutes, I was just like, oh, this is horrible. But I looked at it for the entire 90 minutes and I did not look away. And it was at least two or three scenes where I was hollering. I was hollering at the screen mm -hmm. i won't give it away so y'all can holler too but when tiffany haddish um escaped from jail and the person <laughs> was caught off guard oh shit i hollered do you hear me hollered so good and also it was a scene with an old black man in there and mm -hmm. he was like he don't he just crazy i don't know what's wrong mm -hmm. with him I truly thought it was good. Sometimes it's not even what the people say. It's, it's the reactions that they catch. And it's the reactions that be in the background. It's the, ba it's the they don't literally say a word, but you see people's eyes. You see, you know how black people start doing sign language. Mm -hmm. You know also what was a good one? What yeah. was that diner they was in, in Jersey? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, she gonna whoop your ass. ass. <laughs> watch it, y'all. Don't watch. It's not for the children. No. Definitely not for no children. It's definitely rated R. It's absolutely rated R. But if you need a kiki, like if you and Cali get you an edible, you're going to laugh your butt off. If you somewhere where you can't get edibles, get you a glass of wine, turn on bad trip, like drink one glass of wine, like chug it, like just drink it and then go ahead and turn it off and have chase it with another glass of wine slowly for the rest of the movie. Mm. It will be hilarious. It will be. What'd you think now? It was hilarious. Yeah. It was funny as hell. Bad trip. Yes, check it out. but it's literally the um, black version of Bad Grandpa. I've never seen Bad Grandpa. Oh, you never seen that? That's Is that what funny? The, yeah. Huh. So what's the guys from uh, Jackass? Mm. Yeah, I know that can be hit or miss for you. Mm. But so it's Johnny Knoxville as a little kid, and then it's like two other people. Did they get it? Maybe I'll watch that tonight. Mm -hmm. Oh, it came out in 2013. Yeah. Is it the same production company? Yes, it's the same production company. Oh, Black people, we added sauce to that then. Yeah, you did. Is there any black EPs on that? Or is Johnny not still in the background of the bed? The, Spike, I almost called it a bus trip. Spike Jones? Which is, no, 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 no. That's for Bad Grandpa. I'm talking about Bad Trip. Bad Trip. Who the EPs on that? Or the directors and stuff? The same director. This, uh, oh. Asian. Oh, yeah, Asian guy. That's cool. Mm -hmm. And who the EPs? Oh, story by Eric Andre. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's worth it, y'all. Check it out. Just prepare yourself, though. It's not It's not about the storyline, because I had to, like, prepare my parents. They was like, what is this about? I was like, it's not about it's, the storyline. It's, it's not about the storyline. It's, story the story it's more about the it's, pranks. It's more about the pranks. And it was so good. The Chinese figure trap. <laughs> See, that's almost was the line for me. That's when you get to tell them for me. And I'm very sex positive. But it's just like, what are y'all doing? Because if someone would have rolled up on me like that, I'd be like, listen, get away from, go away from here with that. Now I'm like, Phaedra. Like, go away from here with that. Like the guy at the barbershop? Which one? Oh, <laughs> get out of here. Yes. Like give me some space, but I mm -hmm. recommend y'all watch it. Cool. Yeah. We're going to get in some pillow talk before we, or you got some other stuff? No, we're going to have to do some pillow talk. Okay. Did I cut you? No, no, I'm going to Let's go. Pillow talk. I know it's been a minute. Do you want to just do like some rapid fire pillow talks? Yes. And then we go on a shout out Friday and that way we'll finally be like up to date we'll and call it up. Yeah. all of the hot topics and stuff that folks are talking about. Yes. All right. Let's do Isley versus Brothers versus Earth, Wind and Fire. <laughs> I am personally team Isley Brothers because Ernie. 
Because Ernie? It's because of Ernie, because of Ernie, the way he played with his teeth, the way he put the guitar behind his back, the rolls on the guitar. When he was back in the day, his tank tops, like his midriff tops. Mm-hmm. Ernie. Ernie literally did not say three words while he was there. Did y'all yeah, hear he Ernie's the verse? Fuck out that guitar, though. He played the shit out of the guitar. Can we just put the respect on the Icy Brothers? Who are you? Team Icy Brothers or Team Earth, Wind, and Fire? Um. I went back and forth, but mainly Team Isley Brothers. Right. Because truthfully, there are some songs about from Earth, Wind, and Fire that they played that I did not know. Really? Yes. Like what? I don't know. Oh. Yeah, I didn't know the songs. What? I mean, yes. Earth, Wind, and Fire is legendary. They are legendary, <laughs> but I think there were some songs in the middle. I was like, I don't even know. This. Oh, oh, you mean you didn't know? I thought yes. you were like, I didn't know they sung Reasons. No, no. Oh, okay. No. I was like, oh, but who did you think? During verses, there are some songs I did not know. I agree. From them. But every single Isley Brothers song? I knew every single one of them. I know. Because they came on Quiet Storm. Quiet Storm. I was going to say just the respect on the Isley Brothers on their longevity. Yes. Everything from 1950s Shout to the shit he had a video that premiered that right. night mm-hmm. giving r kelly vibes but i ain't gonna say nothing about that don't you mention the Voldemort? all the way to contagious y'all could i stood low-key when ronald isley was able to come into the late 90s early 2000s i love that scene song you're contagious touch me baby i loved all that also i appreciate the isley brothers just saying they made music with the goal of complimenting black women like when they went in the studio all these black men was like when we write this the only goal is to explicitly compliment black women i fucking stood like i just don't think jockey's going (laughs) inside joe i can't stand jockey's i just don't think a lot of these r&b artists Mm -hmm. with the exception of black tie Shout out to Tyrese. Goes into the studio mm-hmm. with the mind frame of creating a song specifically for black women. Or black love, I would argue. Mm-hmm. But I know for a fact the Isley brothers rolled around in that shit. Yeah. And it was facts. just something about that that just sent me. Big facts. I can roll with that. Yeah. Now, on the flip side, Earth, Wind, and Fire was like your woke uncles who talked about like self love and like loving the planet. Mm-hmm. And like they the ones that you turn on when you want to dance to you sweat. Them the ones you, when you having some hurt, pain, and defeat, and the Clark sisters ain't doing it and you just need to go into an intuitive space. Mm-hmm. That's when you turn on the, um, Earth, Wind, and Fire. And then you got to blast Earth, Wind, and Fire really loud, though. Because, you know, they got an ensemble. It was only a few of them on stage. Mm-hmm. But back in the day, they had an ensemble. They did. It literally was the Earth, Winds, and the Fires. So The elements of the Earth. The elements of the Earth. So it was legendary. I appreciate it. The showmanship was there. Can we talk about how these men was there on time? They were. Started on time and had 25 clean hits. Honestly, the Isley Brothers weren't done. No, they wasn't. If we, I'm still standing for the Isley Brothers. Weren't done. Next, can we go to fashions? Oh, you ain't going to even stop at um, how the folks was dragging Steve Harvey? We'll get that last. Okay. This is about, see, you're doing what Steve did. This, okay. this, this verse is about who? Earth, Wind, and Fire and Isley Brothers. Okay. Also, before we get off the music, can we talk about D D Nice cut off Ernie one more time? Oh my God, it was so getting so annoying because Ernie was about to get in his bag. Don't cut off cut off Steve. Don't cut off Ernie. Don't cut off Ron, who just you know. Yeah, he just crooning. He just vibe. What crooning? crooning. Oh, that's what it is. Yes. Oh, you mean ad libbing? What is crooning? Okay. I'm gonna Google it for you while you keep you. talking so like, you can see the definition. I like to just make sure my words mean things. Okay. And that made me a little upset because if we going to let Steve Harvey talking about his that one time at band camp, we could have let Ernie go ahead and hit us with a couple of wrists because he's one of the greatest um, guitar players of all times, bass player, what, all the all the above players of all times. <sighs> Fashions. Yeah, Ron Isley takes it. Can we shout out to the chinchillas? Can we talk about to walking coats? Can we talk about the hats? <laughs> As we are coming out of this COVID, can we all go back to an era of being overdressed? Can we just go back to a time where we would just go everywhere 
and just be dressed to the nines. Like something about that just truly made me appreciate it. Also, can we talk about how everyone looks good? Mm-hmm. Everyone on that stage looked moisturized. You can tell who ain't do drugs. Yeah. You can tell when a drug on that stage, because ain't no way they'd be able to go this far. First of all, Austin, ain't, you think it was a projector anywhere singing them lyrics? No. Nope. Because I remember Mama Patty and um, Mother um, Gladys Knight. Patty said, what are the lyrics? <laughs> I don't know my lyrics. But the Isley Brothers and Earth, Wind, Fire ain't drop a beat. Mm-mm. They practice. Yes, so I enjoyed the fashion. I love the colorfulness of Earth, Wind, and Fire. Um, what you call it? Start with a V. Renadine with the pearls. Sick. He crawled so Uzi Uzi and them could fly. Mm-hmm. They think they're doing something, don't they? Yeah. When they're wearing these couture outfits and, and blouses and pearls and diamonds. And they don't put respect on their elders who who been doing this shit. Mm-hmm. That ain't no new shit. That ain't no... Crony represents singing style primarily identified by with male performers that enhance light voices, stylistic features, include pitch slides and turns on ascendant notes. I Crony. call that falsettos. Crony. I, I, I know some of the folks didn't like it. People say versus is evolving. And I know some of the, a lot of the generation Z's y'all really should have just like had a seat. Like, some of y'all like, I don't know why we did it. It was like the battle of the uncles. Like, it's something about you niggas that is just like, one thing I did agree with Steve Harvey on this is getting old is the goal. Mm-hmm. And can we put some respect on our elders? Getting old <laughs> is, is the, the goal. goal. Now, it's not much on there. I agree with them. But I agree with getting Stop getting old, old and see what happens. Stop getting old, see what happens. I did agree with him on that. And it was a little bit too many Generation Zs out there buzzing about and I'm like, oh, so y'all thought what was one that was a bad one? You know, I'm a I'm a t- uh, shame the devil. When you were talking about the two men dancing at the club or some shit like that? No, no, I'm talking about I'm gonna get there <laughs> cause Stevie, oh Steve, bring it back. Stevie got to do better. He got way too many kids and way too many young fools around him to be like Steve. That is inappropriate. Mm-hmm. But we'll get back to Steve problematic ass too. I'm talking about bad versus battles that shouldn't happen. Oh, what's some bad ones? Okay, I'll do it. Alicia Keys and John Legend. Oh. Like, we, we, like it's just ah. <laughs> shout out to the Swiss. What? So y'all telling me that was prime, and no. this wasn't? That was boring. I it don't was think boring. I that one. It was boring, and I like both John Legend and Alicia Keys, but the way that in which they showed up, snooze. News I was going to say Teddy Riley, but I'm just enjoying the memes. Which one, the first one or the second one? Exactly. But it was just something there. I, and Niren was trying to unpack it with me to say it's just you losing the, the energy of it and it's about to be hip hop and grimy and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you niggas got to stretch. Expand yourselves. Throw out the 10 inch firing pan and get a big ass cast iron skillet. Hold some heat. Get some culture about yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, Lastly, all right, let's let's close it out with Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey, I didn't realize how problematic he like. He's just he's that problematic. Yeah. What was he talking about? I don't know. He said it just this didn't the, make sense. This ain't the game show host, Steve Harvey. We know. He said this is the real Steve Harvey. And the thing is, I'm not even mad about the conversational beginning because I think you almost need that as like an opening monologue. Like you need that it to shake off the, you know, the nervousness. I'm thinking that the Isley Brothers, Earth, Wind, Fires, although they're performers, they're live performers. You got, they, they not used to being on the trill of the Instagram. You know, you got to shake, you, you had to help guide them a little bit. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, he just did it too much. Like he literally should have came on, did like a five minute monologue and then... From there, he should have went and shifted from being a comedian to being like the facilitator. Yes. He literally should be like, all right, Ron, and I, tell me. Like, and he didn't do that. He told too many of his stories. Yes. And that's where he went left for me. And I think they fixed that because I feel like at the break afterwards, his ass ain't come back and say nothing. But then I think he over anchored. Mm-hmm. Like he came back with pouty face. <laughs> this is him. All right. Hit it, D nice. I was like, <laughs> ain't no pre- preamble to be like, all right, we done did this. What are we gonna do next? Woo! Like Nothing. that that could have been he needed to be on his Kurt Franklin ad lib. Mm-hmm. Like, there it go. Or I was looking for Steve Harvey to do something like, stop, stop, 
running back DJ. Right? Like, you know, right. like that's what Something. I was expecting him to do that type of engagement. Or like ask the question to the Isley brothers, like, Summer Breeze. I think Chris and Carlos says, you know, when you say the lyrics, mm-hmm. makes me, you know, pick one. How? How did you get there? Yes. What was you thinking? Or going to Earth One Fire. Why September and not October? <laughs> but you know, just yes. something like that's more. I, mm-hmm. That's more of the engagement than I was looking at. Then at the end, if you want to bring it back holistically with like a, then a two minute wrap up connected to the story, that's what I was expecting him to do, and he didn't do that. So he didn't do that. Then on top of that, he gave a, um, a splash of homophobia. <laughs> Steve. I went to my daughters and then the men's was dancing with the men's. Well, do they like each other? Were they crumping? Was it? Oh, I, Maybe think, I was them. thinking about romantic dancing, but you're right. Were they battle dancing? <laughs> you didn't know. But either one's acceptable, though. Mm-hmm. I thought he was going to say, I went to the club and everyone was dancing alone. Because I have been to clubs and like everyone was like in their own circle. Like you ever mm-hmm. just seen people geeking their own self up? Yes. Or the clubs with mirror and people just dancing in a mirror. And mm-hmm. I was like, well, why aren't we dancing? Right. With each other? Or I thought he was gonna come to the flip to say we don't really play slow songs in the clubs no more. And it ain't no rent no room for folks to like have a connection. Like you can't pull up on Brussels cuz to be like, hey. You cute, right? Or hey, bro, you cute. Hey, sit. Like you can't do that. Like that's what I thought he was saying. Like the point of going out socializing is to meet your forever, or to meet at least your tonight. And how you meet your tonight sweating? Like when do you have the moment to be like, yeah, yeah, you might be. Doing-. That's where I thought he was going with that. And like, how do we bring a sense of like intimacy back to the clubs? Like you can do. I thought he was gonna be like, we did both. Mm. We danced to the ground with Earth Run a Fire, but we knew. When that bass dropped and the Izzy brothers come on, you find you somebody to like build some intimacy with. Like right. that's what I thought the connection he was gonna connect. But then he talking about the men's dancing with the men's and the women dancing with the women's and the dogs dancing with the dogs. <laughs> Steve, <laughs> why? I wonder. That's one of the things you respond to. What? Yes. Not the dogs dancing so with the, the dogs. dogs. Well, that's basically like the equivalent. Don't make sense. What are you trying to say? People of the same sex like each other. Love each other. Fuck. Why is it shitting on your parade? It's not. Mm-hmm. And, and like I said, I'm not as connected to Steve Harvey. So, you know, I listen to, honestly, a cousin Tommy prank. <laughs> That's probably as close as I get to the Steve Harvey show. So I don't, I, I didn't realize how um, left it was. You got any final thoughts on that? Now? Yeah. I'm just trying to get my words together. Go ahead. Because... I know it was needed because I, you know, I felt like they was trying to like pair it up, you know, Earth, Wind, and Fire, Isley Brothers, let's throw some Steve Harvey, throw some jokes, ha ha ha. But I think he, yeah, uh, he just over anchored too much on himself. Yes. And and it wasn't about him; it was about these other two people. Yes. Or he should have. I would appreciate it more research if you did jokes or stories. Have the stories about them. Mm-hmm. So did whatever word a PA was should have already had Steve equipped or um, prepped in Earth, Wind, and Fire and the Isley Brothers. For the stories they were going to tell for each song. Mm-hmm. Right. And be like, all right, Steve. And you know, he's still an artist, right? You shouldn't have to write out everything he says, but you should share with him the gist of the stories that the Icy Brothers going to share. And then he can create material to then supplement. Oh, yeah. Or at least have that. You know what I'm saying? a list of questions that you're going to ask them. Yes. And then they can kind of already have something. Prepared. Yes. Because I do think it's some choppiness to that, right? Because they're not, and it's not that they're not media trained, but I think they just do media differently. Mm-hmm. And it's different on this type of platform. And I would have just appreciate that. And the thing is, I know Steve Harvey can do that type of shit. Like he literally does it every day, all day. every day. So how? Also, I will give Steve Harvey his hats. I said this when I came to Detroit. I got to get me a custom made hat from Henry the Hatter. Mm-hmm. Between the Isley Brothers, D Nice, and Steve Harvey, I wanted to go through the screen and snatch their hats off. Yeah. And I don't think I've told y'all, y'all. I got. I got a different hairstyle. I haven't shared. You know? Oh, can y'all hear the hairstyle over? Can y'all uh, hear his hairstyle? I don't know if you can hear the hairstyle, but I got a different hairstyle and now hats fit over it. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm about to go into a me in the spring. So I ain't going to have on many hats to wear, but come fall, it's about to be a nasty hat season. All right. What are we going to next Nero? Quickly. We just took too long on that. Yeah, we did. Quavo, Sweetie. Are we going back to Quavo and Sweetie? Did we talk about that? No. I feel like, oh, we, we, we talked about that on Chris, Chris and Carlos. And Carlos. My summary is keep your fucking hands to yourself. Domestic violence goes both ways and niggas stop normalizing tussling. (laughs) 
And plenty of couples. Ain't no privacy. Plenty of couples my ass. Who is your role models? I can Tina. Shout out to Tina. Y'all see the Tina documentary? Chef kiss. Keep your fucking hands yes. to yourself. Everybody. Keep your hands for, to your fucking self. Men, Period, women, stop touching each other. Unless it's consensual. <laughs> hey, it's a way to hit. Come on. <laughs> you got to have what is a safety word. A safe word. <laughs> Shout out to the BDSM community. Hey, so, yeah, um, keep your hands to yourself. It didn't look good. He knew it wasn't going to look good once it went on out. On either end. And then both of them already had a statement. So, it sounds. It seems like they prepare for it. Yeah. Prayers to all involved. I don't want to speak on that man. <laughs> Terrace at the Capitol. He was a black man, a part of NOI. God yeah, damn it. Up. A scheme that Todd. Where's Farrakhan at? Farrakhan, that fucked me up. Farrakhan had to release a statement. And I think we're easing on by that in the black community. But that was a black man, a part of NOI, who did that attack on the terrorists. I mean, on the Capitol. That Dude, fucked me up. Know. It made me sad. Damn. That's why I said, damn. Like, it's usually the whites. It's usually the whites. And, now, and now, these whites going to use this. The one case. Going to use this one case against the NOI for the rest of the, for the rest of eternity. And that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried that they're now going to use this to even double down more to say the NOI is a terrorist organization. Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm really nervous about. Yes, because they already got them classified as a hate group. Yes. And now, because of this, they could do this. So I'm hoping there's some type of investigation to show that he was a rogue me- member. Um, but that don't matter. They don't care about that shit. I know, but I'm hoping. Because you know, you, don't get me wrong, NOI got their ways, honey, and they got some ways. But a terrorist organization, no. No. That is not what NOI They ain't is. about that. Not at all. That is not core values at all. Now, misogynistic, yes. Prayers to all involved. <laughs> Homophobic? <laughs> yes. <laughs> but terrorists? No. <laughs> there ain't no terrorists. Aretha. Fr- oh, we might got to come back to this. I feel like I need to unpack Aretha Genius. What I, oh, actually, what we'll do. I'm going to unpack Aretha Genius. I'm going to do that next week. But what I will say about all the Aretha biopics that are coming out, it could be more than one Aretha, y'all. I would like to be 10 of them. Cynthia Erivo can be Aretha. Uh, Jennifer Hudson can be Aretha. Holly Berry. I don't remember Aretha Franklin said she want Holly Berry to play. Naomi can be Aretha. They all can be the Arethas. We can have many biopics. I would do a particular critique on this one Mm -hmm. and go deep on a different day. But y'all stop dragging Cynthia because she Aretha. And y'all also ain't letting her forget that she... uh, Got a little too comfortable in the African American community too. Yeah. <laughs> well, she did, but sis has apologized in her actions. Did have she? Backed, she did. Oh, I gotta see that. She apology. did apologize. Um, she did say she misspoke. Her words were taken out of context. Um, and she is doing better. We can't continuously hold that over her head forever. What now if she not? fuck up again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you come on my screen. <laughs> But we got to move past it as a community, y'all. We got bigger fish to fry than Cynthia Erivo, okay? Multiple Arethas. Now, we also going to pet because her family ain't approve it, which I do feel a certain way. Aretha family ain't approve shit. Yes. She says, stop talking about us. We don't got nothing to do. Aretha was a very private woman, honey. Mm-hmm. You can tell by the number of cigarettes and the amount of brown liquor. <laughs> Lastly, Derek Jackson. Told you. Shout out Friday now. <laughs> <laughs> a scheme that Todd set up. Stop uh, idolizing these niggas. Stop. Don't I don't even don't idolize Nima Nyambi. Stop idolizing these niggas, these mental health coaches. That's what he is too, right? Be sure to leave one, two, three, four, five star rating and review on Apple Podcasts and on Stitcher. And stop being mean to his wife, because she got a bonnet on. But every time, though. She could stand by that nigga. She could stand by him. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with her standing by. I mean, the look. How it look. But if she want it, if she like it, I love it. That's day business. Mind the business that pays you. But I told you. And that nigga had the nerve to do a, a reaction video on his video. I told you. All right. Shut off Friday. Oh, I'm sorry, Nan. Do you have anything about that? No. Nope. As a man, as a black man, 
they he done messed up the black men don't cheat movement all them pastors have it was a just a stink with them pastors was just channeling cl franklin just channeling them I, I try not to provide advice on things that i'm doing wrong though <laughs> i try not What'd to I try not to provide advice. You're right. He could have taught us how to read the Bible. And make a living on things I'm doing dirt on. He could have taught us how to, like, create smart goals. <laughs> he could have told us how to fold laundry. That's my motto. That's like, I'm going to teach you how to wash clothes, but I ain't never washed clothes in my life. Lord, that's it. You Say it again, Nero. <laughs> I try my best not to give on advice on or advice on things I'm doing dirt on. Another Dawson, another Martell Club. We need to create a society for these niggas. Yes, the the, the society of the niggas with the audacity. So he has a, he a cheating ass nigga, but has the audacity to then come on and tell women that they should leave their cheating ass niggas. And then, <laughs> and then y'all go go to queen of the y'all talking about she in the army of the Lord and the Navy and she did come on. Sis, honestly, I wouldn't have said nothing. But I stand by your man, like Dolly Parton said. So that's my only thing. Don't he throwing glass? You know he throwing rocks at a glass house. Pot kettle black black kettle pot. All that all all the old adages. He doing them. Can we? We're gonna have to have an episode about cheating. Do we have any friends or folks we can find who have at, have explicitly cheated and just truly come unpack this? Because. Some to willing to come on the podcast and talk about it. Yeah, they oh. can say they can say names. Mm-hmm. And I want to talk about I want two couples. I want one couple who has pushed through it. The one couple is like fuck that. Mm-hmm. And just it's just something to this or this like serial cheating. I don't know. Or why don't you feel comfortable enough to just come to your partner and be like monogamy is not me. Mm-hmm. Y'all be surprised of what people would go for. If you just come out and tell your truth, you will really be surprised. I have a few friends that's like, if the nigga would just told me, child, I got some requests too. <laughs> come on. Come on. From the Proverbs of Sawidi. Remember when she was on that show and they asked her, like, would you ever do a threesome? Blah, blah, blah. Your man did everything perfect. Blah, blah, blah. And she was like, yeah, you're right. My man did everything perfect. You know what? I could lighten up a little bit. I'll give him the option to choose what nigga we bringing in the bed. <laughs> Look, all right, we got some Apple Podcast reviews. Hey, Amen. May the um, add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his work. Come oh, on. Come okay. On. Prayers to all involved. Prayers to all involved. I ain't speaking on that man. Respectfully, disrespectfully. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that man heart. All right, we got. <laughs> I'm trying to Come get on. through this podcast now. Come on. Uh, amazing content appreciated by podcast machine it says hey black love matters crew uh, i love the show i've been a long time listener and have seen elevation god has allowed in oh, your hey, lives the show inspires me to challenge my thoughts and giving uh, me some cool keys Nero, get a grip traction was a good read i told you well, Nero, what you thought they was telling you to get a grip i don't get your know. Shit together? <laughs> I, I had to Nero thought you gave a five-star <laughs> review with a one-star comment i, I had to, that's why i had to stop <laughs> Nero thought you gave a five that's star why review i had to stop with one star comments Nero, we can't edit it out i know that is okay but you, you know i like out. i like to do one takes and exactly. be done with it yeah um and then it says why don't you go back and read that so Nero, get a grip uh-huh. traction was a good read yeah and it says Niami, what's up, fam? Perfect. Mine's next. Yeah. Um, it's giving flowers exclamation point by Coochie Tech. Q- <laughs> Q- what is it? Cootie Tech. K U T I E C N C. It says, Hey, bros, this class. Should I say the name? Yeah. This is Chloe from um, Charlotte, North Carolina. I've been tuned in for quite a while, and now I'm finally writing a review. Don't judge me. We won't, sis. I will. Um, seriously, I absolutely love your podcast. You both brought some joy and much needed laughs on my daily commute. I look forward to new episodes weekly. Please keep doing what y'all are doing. Oh, and hey, Mabel. Sure. Oh, please. <laughs> we got last one. from. It says, yes, from Miss, uh, what is it? Takara. Takira. Takira. Yeah. I love, 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 love this podcast. Mm-hmm. 
I love the realness and the rawness y'all made me literally laugh out loud. I started listening from episode one, and then once the pandemic hit, I wanted <laughs> to keep going, keep up with the current episode. So I later started from the first episodes of 2020 oh, to now. Oh wow, perfect! I definitely gotta uh, go back and listen to the older episodes because <laughs> those by story chronicles. Had me on the floor. I need to go back and listen to Keep it up. Too. I look forward to every new episode. Um, and then the last one says, Nero and Naomi the bomb. Oh, thank you. And it just says, yada, yada, yada. We give y'all life. <laughs> All that good stuff. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I think I'm going to some of my pockets. Like, yada, yada, yada. We love you. Good luck. Yep. And then we got one voicemail. So you want to leave us a voicemail? 508 784 1111. Once again, it's 508 784 1111. And again, these voicemails. Mm-hmm. Hey, Nira, I'm in um, Hi. This is Keisha. Um, I've been a listener for about a year now. Cool. But I just went back and listened to, uh, I think this is episode 286, Finding. Mm-hmm. Y'all play too much. <laughs> I was absolutely laughing and cackling to some of these people. <laughs> Finding Petey Pablo? Yeah. Y'all play too much. Raise up. <laughs> North Carolina. But low-key hockey. Um... Let's talk about how some of these shows wrapped up, and I'm I'm messed up about it. Yes, Insecure is ending this yep, year. This is really the final is. season. Yep. WandaVision tore me up, and I'm just not with it. I don't know what I'm gonna watch on TV now. Mm-hmm. What am I supposed to do? Exactly. So Nyambi, do some research for us all, okay? I will. I'm thinking about getting into that Equalizer <laughs> with Colleen Latifah. I watched a few episodes. That's good. Yeah, I'm thinking about getting into that Equalizer, but I report back. Y'all know I love a good show. I'm getting into Law and Order: Organized Crime with Stabler. So I know I'm at least do them too, but I feel you like sometimes you like the little indie ones, don't you? Or you mm-hmm. like the ones that just be all in itself, like a nice little package. It's about to be summer, um, spring, so I'm just imagining those things are gonna keep come back. Is P Valley coming back? Yeah. Down in the valley where them girls get naked. Cause I follow Mercedes on Instagram, and she getting ready. Oh, how's she getting ready? You nasty nigga. Shit, she doing those uh she pole dancing ceiling. classes. She's not Mercedes. Cause Mercedes like I didn't gain that COVID COVID weight, so you gotta y'all. Get it off you. I gotta get this uh, weight off me, and then next thing you know, next video her ass it. slanging, <laughs> slanging from her shit. I said, damn, she still got it. She still, hey, it's like riding a bike. I heard. Mm-hmm. Don't let that meat fool you. Yeah. All right, closing us out now. Yes. Um, oh. As always, to submit your black love story, go to blacklovematters.com. To submit a question for kitchen table talk, shoot us an email. At blacklovematters at gmail.com. That's black one, okay? And to leave a comment about anything we talked about, head on over to that website. We got that SoundCloud and we got that voicemail at 508 784 1111. Once again, that's 508 784 1111. Talk to y'all later. Remember, love, love is, is ever evolving. evolving. Peace. Peace.